Most governments around the world don't think about technology and science until there is a problem. Because the speed of technology change is so fast, this means the normal regulatory process won't work. The key actor here is government because of the, uh, the role it has to protect its citizens. We no longer can afford having legislation changes over a time of like five years or ten years time. It can be done immediately and it can be done in collaboration between governments and private sector. It is important for governments to help their citizens be the architects of the future. My name is Alicia Bagat. I'm the Futures Lead at Forum for the Future. I'm Amy Webb, Chief Executive Officer of the Future Today Institute. I'm Jerome Glenn. I'm the Executive Director of the Millennium Project, a global think tank. My name is Ahmed Al Bedouawi. I'm the Assistant Secretary General of the uh, General Secret Secretariat of the UAE Cabinet. My name is Kat Tully. I run an organization called the School of International Futures. My name is Patrick Nowak. I'm Executive Director of Future Foresight and Imagination at the Dubai Future Foundation. The whole world is changing to become a digital world. That puts platforms, it goes across all of the borders and start to serve people all around the world. So citizens are becoming more or less a global citizen. We have to start finding a balance between regulating in a meaningful way without hampering innovation, but also not letting tech and science run wild and potentially cause harm on society. We might see and try to understand what a technology is, how we develop and construct it and build it. We might even anticipate how we could use that technology, but it's going to be really difficult for us to anticipate how that technology is going to impact our society. People are increasingly asking, what's the kind of world that I'm going to inherit? So the big question is, how can we make sure that the decisions at the moment are intergenerationally fair? The challenge for policymakers is to develop the right kind of policy so that we can promote innovation, but at the same time protect the wider population from any negative fallouts. And often we lack the language and the knowledge in order to do that. And imagination is absolutely critical for that. Just like there's all this innovation in tech and there's innovation in science, there needs to be innovation in policy. We need to find a new way to, to sort of beta test regulations and pilot policy and experiment a little bit before it actually goes into effect. You can't sit there and say, here are the rules for technology X because technology X will just go beyond it. So you have to have an anticipatory system with an auditing, but then a blocking if, it, if, it, if it's, it's not good enough. Connected with that, the people putting these agreements together have to be a combination of governments, corporations, some universities are very good at this, uh, and maybe even some NGOs. So we're going to have to have a trans-institutional relationship. So you take the best parts of each institutional category, sew them together for your governance system. From the very beginning, it's about bringing policymakers into the room to shape that future in dialogue and community with uh, other organizations. And so when that happens, then we don't have the problems of trying to kind of convince and, and push uh, people to do something. They're part of the solution from the beginning. It's very important that different types of communities participate in these kind of activities. They are by far the best proxies of understanding the richness of what might happen in the future. And so we need to change policy making processes and decision making processes to actually incorporate that rich knowledge and understanding in well-designed ways. So what we need to look at now is what are the real ways of operationalizing this interest in intergenerational fairness, solidarity, and future generations. The necessity comes for governments to come closer to each other, to make sure that whatever policies and legislation that have been put, it really benefits the people and benefits the economy and the entire country. Leaders nowadays are not just leaders for people today, but they also have to be leaders for our citizens tomorrow and the years ahead.